Who's next? I'm ready! How about you? My therapist sucks. She told me to deal with my problems on my own. Yeah. Sounds like... Mm. Sound, <laughs> sounds like you need a refund. <laughs> this dude did not go see Alien Romulus. What did he say? What did he say? Yeah. He said, y'all, Alien Romulus was crazy and he just put a bunch of Spongebob... <laughs> Pictures. <laughs> okay. Interesting. I wonder how the crow fits into the rest of the MCU. <laughs> MCU. Yeah, he's. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I mean, like Feige is like really good at that. Like, where he's really good at listening to the fan base and really, um, really crafting uh, a story and a character that people have been begging for. Really. Um, then you know yeah. they want to see. That alongside Spider-Man. I, I wonder if the Alien vs. Avengers comic book mm -hmm. is going to be like a tease for like an actual movie mm. in the MCU. Mm -hmm. Wouldn't that be really cool if they That'd actually be took... so cool. You know what's funny, Hunter? They never do that. <laughs> nope. They, they, but, listen. But, but people like Blu-ray Angel on Twitter mm -hmm. and freaking you probably don't even know who that is but no nope. he's this cringy guy who like who who like every single time there's any information about anything he's like how does this affect the mcu let's mm. see see that's funny how does this affect the batman okay buddy shut up he's also the guy that's like day 2000 no, not, not 2000 day 200 and something of trying to get a role in the batman part two oh, and it's just him in the gym Dude, that's so lame. And then he pretends to know comic books. Oh that's, my god, let's dude, just start this fucking... Thing. I can't stand I can't. people that pretend to know comic books on Twitter. I don't know comic books, but I don't pretend to. Yeah, I don't pretend to know about comic books I haven't read. Mm -hmm. That's why I'm trying to like read as many Who as I can. Who the fuck because... is Moon Knight? <laughs> <laughs> Moon Knight is always my... Moon Knight. My favorite example is always Moon Knight. <laughs> Kilo 33 and Kilo 34, your current LZ is too hot. Roger that. Dot, stand by to receive and respond. Yes, Commander. Coordinates received. Initiate immediate course correction. The Office of Naval Intelligence Sword Base is presently under siege from a Corvette class government vessel. Due to the sensitive nature of this facility, use of orbital rounds has been for the moment prohibited. Regrettably, my efforts to obtain relevant data on enemy forces have been unsuccessful. However, current defensive forces are insufficient. Oni has requested Team Noble's direct intervention to help secure Sword Base. Alright, people. We're stuck with that ship for the time being. Let's focus on the hostile infantry. Give those troopers a hand. Cat 6, you're out here. George Emil, you're next. Get prepped. Let's move, Lieutenant. Yeah, I mean, I watched Iron Man Ghost Rider, watch. Uh, sound like bits and pieces of Sam Raimi Spider-Man. Uh, obviously, I watched X-Men, Fantastic Four. Mm -hmm. those, were, those were like those were X-Men and Iron Man were... were the two big ones for me. Mm -hmm. so I also watched Batman Begins. <laughs> Great film. Really, just one of the best trilogies in movie history. Yeah, it gets a little, a little risky at the end there, but mm -hmm. it, it sticks to landing. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like, what about that? Tell me about that death scene, Hunter. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about, right? Which one? Talia. Oh yeah, death look. Scene. Yeah, it's like, and it's like the thing is, is like, yes, that movie isn't perfect, but part of it is because, you know, he wanted to make a fourth one, but 
you know, he had to write, rewrite the story and we had to change things because some people were suicidal. First theories <laughs> that he didn't, that he made the, the third one not that good on purpose so they would, wouldn't make him come back to do a fourth one. I, that's the dumbest theory I've ever heard. It's not like he made an awful movie. It's not like it's not like he made like. Well, yeah, he, he, the thing is, it's the the theory goes that Christopher Nolan, as much as he tries, he can't make a bad movie. <laughs> That's so funny. You know what? That's funny, actually. Because every good. single movie I've seen by him is good. That's true. He hasn't made a bad movie. I heard. Have it. you seen Memento? No, I haven't. There was another. Oh. There was another one that he made that I haven't seen either that came out in 2020. Get somebody was talking about it the other day, and I was like, I didn't even, I haven't even heard of this movie before. It came out in 2020. Yeah, and it was like, like they put it on streaming services right away, and he got that he got really pissed, and that's why he went to Universal to make um, Oppenheimer. Oh, Tenet. Tenet, yes. That's I've, the one. Yeah, I haven't seen Tenet, so. I have. Is it good? Uh. Back when I first watched it, mm -hmm. no, it was not. Back like if I watch it now, I'll probably be like, "Oh, you know what? This is a really misunderstood movie, and you know, it's really." But <laughs> mm -hmm. it, it's just okay. It eats your brain. Mm, okay. Uh, it's very okay. What the fuck was that? That was me on accident. <laughs> okay. Uh, it's really. It's like a word salad. <laughs> a word movie. salad. Yeah, and, and like the it's person, like, it's like trying to listen to Donald Trump and Kamala Harris talk. <laughs> Both of the, it's like trying to listen to them debate each other uh -huh. for two hours straight. Yeah, the person that was telling me about this movie uh, was the kind of person that would like a word salad as a movie, and I do too from time to time. But this is like that's his favorite thing. So like, is just well, it's not that it's, it has too much talking. It's just. It wants you to understand so much and so little yeah, that, yeah, that's what I mean. Like these really bloated films that, you know, try to convey something really deep and debatably not enough time. Because the idea of it is mm -hmm. that there's things that go forwards oh. in time and things that go backwards in time. Mm. And, and the protagonist is going in both directions. It's kind of... Or no, everything is, is going in both... It's, it's really hard to explain. Gotcha, okay. Everything's going in both directions. There's like a scene in the movie that tries to explain it. Mm -hmm. But basically there's a there's two bullets on the table. One of them's going backwards in time. One of them's going forwards in time. And you can't tell which one because they're both sitting on the table okay. or something. I don't know. It, it... Yeah, it's... it's Yep. <laughs> <laughs> it's just... And, and like, honestly, when I go... When I look at what um, he said in interviews. Somebody asked him, it's like, what would you say to somebody who, who's like really trying hard to understand your film but can't? He says, don't try to understand it, just feel it. <laughs> okay, okay. And I like that. I like yeah. that he said that. Because yeah. it's like, it's like, okay, I don't really need to understand this. I can just feel it, what it's trying to Yeah, absolutely. Do. It's like, uh... That's exactly what I did with Oppenheimer. Yeah, there you, yeah, that's a really good way to actually view Oppenheimer. It's for some reason this made me think of it when I watched Tar in theaters. I uh, there was like there was like a middle aged guy and his family in front of me, and the movie gets done. And it's one of those movies that if you're a middle aged man that watches like two movies a Action. year, exactly Action. two movies a year, and you watch it on cable, you're not gonna like Tar. Like, sorry, you're not going to. And he and he and like we're walking out of the theater and he's standing in front of me, and I'm just standing there talking with my friend. I was like, dude, that was like really brilliant and I'm and then the dude in front of us is just like I don't know what the fuck just happened <laughs> <laughs> yeah oh shit oh get back here I'm in taking the stairs <laughs> I don't even know where that came from I just I just think oh. it sounds funny. Oh, just cat. You oh need my to... god. Okay, this. I'm taking the gunner seat. Never from let, him. never let cat 
do anything. Dude, for real. She can't, she can't do anything. She can't drive the Warthog. She can't gun on the Warthog. The Marines are better shot than <laughs> yeah, her. Yeah, she can't I drive because she's a woman. Oh. <laughs> and... Bungie knew what they were doing with the coding. Hey Hunter, wait, 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 mm -hmm. get out of the get out yeah, of the yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, stand back, stand back, stand back. Okay. Okay. I know what to do. I know how to solve yep. this. Alright, ready? Yeah, I'm ready. Alright, stand back. I'm standing back. <laughs> <laughs> we did it. <laughs> Look at us go. Another good example is like if you watch an A24 film with anybody over the age of like 30, good luck. <laughs> yeah. That's, it's definitely made for younger mm -hmm. audience. Which I is mean, weird because it's made for like a more mature, oh, absolutely. younger audience. Yeah. So it's funny whenever you try to watch it with somebody who's your age, but then they don't. They're like, nah. yeah. You know? That's how it was. They're not cinematically inclined, as I like to say. Yep, that's how it was with uh, with the guy that was in the first uh, points of reviews. We, I, I took him through a couple. Um, I took him through um, through Pearl, and like mm -hmm. Pearl, he was like, "What the? F like he was just confused the whole time." Have you seen Pearl? Yes. Yeah, he didn't. He wasn't a big really fan good. of Pearl. Yeah, Pearl's really good. He, he wasn't a big fan of that. And then we also watched. Um, uh, uh, everything, everywhere, all at once, which I really like, and he was—he absolutely hated that one. Um, why? I haven't seen that one. I just it, it, why it's, he hated it. It's it's uh, like you said. It's those films are definitely made for. They're not made for the. I don't want to say average person. They are, but they're not made cinematically made, inclined. Exactly. Whoa. Yeah, yeah. They're, they're not made for people that once again watched a couple movies a year. Um, and I mean that movie is a lot going on, anyways. Um, yeah, those kinds of movies are made for people who love movies, exactly. In general, yep. Really, or more than just movies, they love cinema. I like to say. Yeah, exactly. Yep. Um, and then he did like mid nineties, but somebody like Brad, for instance. Oh my god. Mm -hmm. He's somebody who just likes movies. Yeah, we, me, and you, we like we like more than just movies because. Mm -hmm. We don't just go to every blockbuster. We go to stuff that we're, like, super interested exactly. in. Exactly. Yeah. You know, like, yeah. I like blockbusters. I love them. Like, Alien yep. and Deadpool Wolverine. Mm -hmm. I love those kinds of movies. Absolutely. But I also love movies like, you know, Late Night with the Devil. Exactly. Or, um, or Pearl. Or, mm -hmm. um, Long Legs. Yeah, exactly. By the way, Long Legs, brilliant. I need to watch Long Legs. I've heard nothing but good things. Get in the car. In oh, the car. Uh, okay, and then you know? what's that other? Uh, what's the other one? Re what's the other one? The prequel to Pearls. That X was that called? Uh, Pearl was the prequel to X. Oh, sorry. Yeah, yeah. You're right. You're right. I got that backwards. But... I like Pearl more than I liked X. X. Was yeah, okay. X I is. I, I felt like like was... I know the I got the premise of uh, of it, but <laughs> wasn't bad. Mm -mm. I just no. I like Pearl more. Yeah, Pearl is Pearl is really good. And not just because Jenna or Tegan gets noon in it. Oh, you're. I think you're talking about X there. Am I? Oh, I dude. I. It's been a while. <laughs> Pearl is the one that takes place like in like the olden older times. It's a. Oh yes. Yeah. Um. And then I heard Maxine was just not. I didn't watch Maxine. Was, I heard Maxine was just not good. Yeah, I didn't watch that one. Oh. Hideo Kojima liked it. 
And then you get like this rare occurrence, right? Mm -hmm. You get this rare occurrence of a, of a blockbuster being a movie like that at the yeah. same time, like Furiosa. F Furiosa, everything, everywhere, all at once. Yeah, and then and then it's really funny because like film snobs and stuff will hype it up, and then you get people that'll go to see these movies thinking that they are a blockbuster, and then a lot of times they don't like it. Another, actually, kind of a... This isn't the best example of it, but I feel like one is Oppenheimer. Like, a oh, lot... Yeah. yeah, like, Oppenheimer, I loved it, but a lot of people, like... People only saw that because of Barbenheimer. The whole Barbenheimer yeah, thing. Yeah, that was definitely... Bar so the people who went to see Barbie were like, oh, yeah, Barbie, that's so fun. Yep. And then they're like, okay, let's go see Oppenheimer since everybody's talking about this one, too. And then they don't like it. And they're like... Yep. Yeah, they're two very... Well, yeah, very different movies. And they're like, oh, well, you know, Christian Bale made it. You know, so... Christian Bale. Oh, not Christian... <laughs> <laughs> yep, well, that's no, no, the no, no, no. You, you, you nailed it. Because they would say something like that. Yeah. It's got that guy from Iron Man in it. It's got yeah, the, the dude from <laughs> the dude from Moon Knight. Yeah. The guy from Fortnite. <laughs> the guy from Fortnite. Yo, they put the it's dude the from, from Drake Fortnite. and Josh in it. The dude from The dude from Christopher Nolan. <laughs> the dude from Christopher Nolan. Oh my god, that same guy, Blue Ray Angel, you know what he did? What'd he do? Uh so there's this picture of Christopher Nolan with his family at like a premiere of one of his movies, right? Yeah. And he's like, he put like that that Mr. Incredible music that he that's like, um, on when he's going in the computer, and it's like, you know, like that suspenseful music. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah. Um, and he's like, I just noticed something. Christopher Nolan's son kind of looks like Christian Bale. <laughs> And if you look at his son, like, yeah, you can kind of see it, but he looks a lot more like Christopher Nolan to me. Yeah, know. it's almost like it's Probably because you know kid. it's his son. You know, like, <laughs> this guy was trying to say that Christopher Nolan's wife cheated on him with Christian Bale. Oh, my Bale. God. What a loser. Just because his son looks a little bit like him. Damn, this is difficult because... For some reason, they decided to put the freaking elites mm -hmm. in the warthog. There's this weird thing, too, for some reason, where people on Twitter, they're like, dude, look at this celebrity I look like. It's like, no, you don't. You just think you look like them because that's your favorite celebrity, douchebag. Yeah. Yeah, like, it's like it's like if I was like, oh, yeah, I look like Harrison Ford. <laughs> you really look like an 80-year-old I could man. try to. I could try to look like Harrison mm -hmm. Ford, but, you know, it's... It's not gonna happen. Somebody like, we know him. did that. <laughs> Who did that? I won't say it. <laughs> Who did this? You know exactly who I'm talking about. Oh lord. Oh yep. Okay, I think I remember. The, I think I remember yep. the exact post you're talking about. Yep. Yeah, okay, that's. And I think I immediately messaged you. It was like, hey, um, you see this? <laughs> Oh. Why did I do that? Okay. It's like, yeah, Hunter, guess what? What? I decided that I look like Hugh Jackman today. <laughs> so stupid. I also look a lot like Robert Downey Jr. Yeah. If you didn't know. Quid quidinci whoa. Just a coincidence, but your two favorite actors. Yeah, I, I look like them a lot. And uh, <laughs> if you don't think so, you're just being mean. Exactly. It has nothing to do with the fact that they're my favorite actors. You like me fucking saying I look like Jeremy Allen White. What the fuck is wrong with me, you fucking You like you like Jeremy Allen White? I've really been um I've really been enjoying his work lately. I've seen Shameless, which this is a good show, and he plays a big part in that show. Then I've been watching The okay. Bear. Okay, quick question for mm -hmm. you: Have you seen how he acts outside of these things? Yeah. I mean, I know it doesn't really matter when it comes. Yes. To... What do you think? You know, seems a little socially autistic. 
I feel like it's another one of those cases where, like... I don't know, where people can't really separate the the actor from his movies and roles. Well, no, I, I, I do that all the time. Like, if there's a... Other than Glenn Powell, I don't know mm -hmm. what it is about me, but I cannot stand that dude. That's funny. His face just pisses me off. <laughs> That's fair. I, I only say that because like that it, that happens with the boys a lot, where uh, where people uh, I don't know the actor for Homelander, but people will be like, "Yeah, Homelander, oh. you fucking, <laughs> you're such an asshole." And he's like, "I'm just what a, did I do? I'm just a character on television." Yeah, <laughs> Jeremy Allen White. Okay, this is one of the, this is like something like a reason why I'm not like the hugest fan mm -hmm. of this guy. Someone asked him uh, if he would ever do, like, comic book movies, right? Mm -hmm. And, you know, like, every single actor who's, like, getting popular always gets asked this, asked this question. Yeah. And it's so annoying. So, I mean, I understand if you get annoyed, but, like, what he said was just, like, was just, like, okay, that's an insult to me a little bit. <laughs> he was, like, he was, like, you don't, you don't deserve me in your movie. I'm too good for those movies. Okay, That's what he was that. basically saying. I can imagine Twit. Well, okay. Here's the thing. I sort of get where he's coming from, and especially like if it. If, if I it, get it, it but it, like it just comes off as like you're way too like you got like a huge ego. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? That, that's fair. I think part of it is also too. Not everybody's into comic books. You know, not everybody's into superhero yeah. stuff, which I think is something that some people on Twitter need. I'm not saying you, but some people need to understand that too, to some extent. Um, and that's fine. I just yeah. don't like it when people say that. Yeah, that yeah, that was a bit of a that was a bit <laughs> I'm of I'm way too good for those movies. Yeah, that was a bit of a it. wild take to say, but like okay, Glenn Powell, he said I don't want to do those movies. Mm -hmm. Like I don't like this guy, but he had the perfect answer. He said I don't want to do those movies, but I like watching them. Yeah. Yeah, that's fair. He's like I I I love Deadpool and Wolverine, but it doesn't make me want to do mm -hmm. comic book movies. That's fair. Which is, I was, and you know what I said? I was like, good, that means I'm not going to have to see your face in them. Yep. Because, you know, all the fan casts for Booster Gold are getting out of hand. <laughs> and Batman, like, oh my god, how many times? That dude cannot, he's not, no, no, no. <laughs> I swear if that guy replaced Batman, I'm going to... I wonder who we're gonna get as Batman next. I will. I will buy a Blu-ray. I will throw it in the toilet and piss all over it, like yeah. that one guy did to the Batman. I wonder what. I wonder who's gonna be Batman and Bear, Brave and the Bold. Uh, Ezra Miller. <laughs> dude, can you imagine? I might, dude. That'd be the funniest turn of events. <laughs> Ezra Miller as Batman. Ezra Miller as Batman. Oh God. Batman. Dude, I want them to go back and do like a, a live action Batman that's like um the Lego Batman. That'd be funny. Games. Like that that one that acts like I don't know, has like that comic book charm to it. Mm -hmm. I don't know how to just, Yeah, I no, I yeah, I get it. you. Kinda of more campy, more like, like, like more like my, Michael Keaton's Batman. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I think that'd be a good change. Especially if we're gonna still have like a dark, you know. Uh, the Batman universe style stuff, like yeah, absolutely. Yeah, like you Give can us have something. Both. Yeah, exactly. I'm fine with having both. Because I mean, I don't want just one or the other. And I and I will give credit to like when we had the DC animated universe and stuff. Like we had those opportunities where we could have a more silly Batman, but also have a more darker Batman. You know? Oh, look at that! Look at that assassination. <laughs> Favorite mission in this game? What is it? Mm, that's tough. That's really tough, honestly. That's a it, weird answer. <laughs> <laughs> Why? Why is that a weird answer? I don't remember there being a mission named Tough. Oh, yeah. Game. Yeah, sorry. Um, <laughs> man, uh, I don't know. I, I just love Reach so much. It's hard to pick a favorite, honestly, for Reach. Sure he gets 
Oh, give me that health back. Give me. Thank you. <laughs> Feels so much better. Feels so much stronger. Hey, Hunter, guess what? What's up? I'm taking the stairs. I'm taking the stairs. I'm taking the stairs, bitch. Boom. Uh oh. This is my boomstick. This is my boomstick. What is that from? You don't know? No, I don't remember that. Army of Darkness. Oh. Great movie. I met the creator of it. Oh, sick. Yeah. Remember me talking about that on the podcast? I do. I do. Oh my god, that, that was so funny. Uh, my girlfriend was like, was like, I grew up watching Eve. I grew up watching. Oh, yeah. uh, well, <laughs> I grew up. I love your Evil Dead movies. You made my childhood, right? Hmm. And he was like, you grew up watching Evil Dead. <laughs> and she was like, yeah. <laughs> I wonder what the xenomorphs think of the current state of the economy. I know, right? I wonder what they think of them see right now. <laughs> it hasn't been good since stage two. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Xenomorphs definitely come off as like more of a phase two fans, mm -hmm. I think. I would know. Because <laughs> I am one of the phase two fans. Dude, I can't make an MCU ranking anymore. There's too too many goddamn it's too movies. much shit, man. Too many movies, too many, too many TV ones. shows, man. Like, there's so much garbage. I don't. I'm not even ranking the TV shows. I just do the movies, that's, and then I rank the movies fair. by phase. I don't. I do not do all of, all of them at once because it's impossible to choose a favorite, and it's mm -hmm. impossible to choose a least favorite because there's there's a lot of bad, there's a lot of good. Mm-hmm. Yep, and lately there's been more bad. Well, not like, but you know, over the last like year and a half. I'm leaning more towards apologist <laughs> mode. Uh, now, I did not expect the Marvels to be like as good as it was. Mm hmm. Like, the Marvels, okay, look, it's not like an amazing movie or anything, but after I watched it a second time. I actually went to more like a three and a half to a four star okay. for me. And uh, Multiverse of Madness, that's a five star. Noble team, long swords are inbound and ready to push. Orbital defense is standing by to take the shot. like you said Halsey I did copy that on our way don't need command to tell me been all hers half my life I requested your assistance commander and do not need a report on events that occur on my own doorstep what I do require is a detailed account of your previous engagement George it's been too long Mom. What have you done with my armor? Just some additions I've made. Indeed. Visegrad Relay. Its data center was home to one of my Xeno archaeologists, Professor Laszlo Sorvad. Perhaps you could shed some light on his death. If he was a civilian male in his mid-sixties, he died with a Covenant energy sword through his abdomen. Elites, then. They engaged us as well. It was just, uh... Just after we found your scientist's daughter, Mom. She was hiding in the... Irrelevant. Air. The elites. Tell me more about them. Three. Zealot class. One got bias. 
The leader, from the looks of him. Zealots. You're certain? Their armor configuration matched. Shield strength, too. I gave the order not to pursue. Our primary objective was to get the station's relay back online. Your primary objective? Commander, are you a puppet or a Spartan? Ma'am? There are those at Oni, myself included, who believe the Covenant dispatch elite advanced teams to hunt down artifacts of value to their religion. Survivor accounts suggests such teams are small, nimble, and almost always zealot class. No doubt, they came to the station for the abundance of Oni excavation data stored there. And you let them get away. Data retrieval was not a command directive. Even had we known, we had other more urgent matters to attend to. Like warning the planet. Professor Sorvad's final entry in his field notes made reference to a latchkey discovery. Latchkey. Not a word he would use lightly. So let's hope that the data module your lieutenant commander stole contains it. Cat? Before you ask, I was alerted the moment you attempted to access its contents, as I am with any unauthorized tap. That data is classified Tier 1. I could send you to the brig for interfering with my work. Maybe you'd like to join her. I'm sorry? We're currently under emergency planetary directive. Winter contingency? I'm sure you're familiar with the punishment for civilian interference with the Spartan deployment. Are you threatening me, Commander? Just making a reading suggestion, ma'am. Let's move, noble team. Mom? That will be all, George. <laughs>